Good morning, everybody. My name is Patrick McNicholas, and I'm the artist that has uh, kind of created some of the composite images that you'll see here, and all these ones are uh, upstairs. And in fact, all these ones are the ones that change when you look at them. So when you go upstairs, when you move back and forth, you know, they'll kind of disappear and appear. And those are called lenticular images. And I'll try not to get too technical on how those are made and everything, but we'll talk a little bit about how the project came to be, how you can even do it yourself, and some keys to researching. So here's the exhibit. That's upstairs, it's uh, 25 images, nine of which are these lenticulars, and they printed out these ones so that you can kind of understand what's going on. And so the project's not just the pictures, it's in fact a lot of the uh, research that goes along with it. And uh, so we'll go back a little bit. Uh, this is the origin. So a friend of co-worker of mine, Mike Lenz, he posted this picture of Fourth and Denver, Denver going across here, Fourth Street, and uh, the Adams Hotel as well as Mayo are still there. But the Akdar Shrine Temple at this time it was known as Cimarron Ballroom, of course. Uh, Leon McAuliffe, the steel guitar player for Bob Wills, uh, he owned it there for a while. Uh, Patsy Cline, one of her kind of more iconic albums, was recorded there as well. But you see, he posted the current day image which is just a google maps image and uh, i took this one and i took this one and i was like well you know i'll create this kind of animation and so you can see here in the comments i created this animation which is this one right here and these ones this, again this was the first one that i made so it kind of moves a little quicker since then i've kind of made it so you can see the transition transitions a little easier but uh, again the shrine here this is a picture that is featured in the exhibit upstairs so in 1925 this was the Akhtar mosque shrine and again later renamed Cimarron Ballroom and uh, it was a theater performance hall originally but then uh, once the depression hit it actually went out of business and uh, the only thing it was used for up until that point was a uh, induction center for World War II soldiers and so uh, once uh, the war was over Leon McAuliffe bought it and uh, in e even later years images of this building on this corner you'll see the KRMG so they actually broadcast out of there Okay, there's a lot to look at here. We'll take them one by one. And this is again kind of the beginnings of the projects. So we got Horace Mann School right here. Fred Jones used to be over here. So now this is all surface parking lot. Ended up being a lot of parking for Boston Avenue. But uh, this is looking directly down uh, Main Sh or Boston, yeah. And uh, that would have been one of the first few images because he gave me images, a whole bunch of gifts that he had collected. And uh, then I went out and shot kind of these current day ones. So this would have been uh, the Phil Tower. You can kind of see it right around the corner. That's the only place I could really match it up with. But uh, this is when it was built. And then you can see the Phil Cade, which also Phillips was responsible for, was built next to it. So that's on Boston Street. Uh, we'll talk about that one here a sec. This is Edison Street, which a uh, pretty popular location for news photographers. They like to go out to this spot. And uh, I was lucky enough to kind of move over into these tree, this tree area and I was able to kind of get the exact same shot. So this one's really powerful. And another one that I have of the skyline on my page uh, is another pretty powerful to see that change. And then finally this one over here, I don't know if everyone can see it, but I'll make it bigger here in a second. This is the KC Auto Hotel and uh, pretty low quality versus the one that you see right here. And uh, the stucco and everything was added on top of the brick. That's going to explain a little bit of the change in the tactileness of the building. But this is like a 1930s image. Uh, 
had just opened a few years before, and these are some of their rental cars that they had out front, Chevrolets and Fords. What street is that? This is uh, right there on Cincinnati, and this would be 3rd Street right here. So the PAC loading dock right here, City Hall building. So this is actually a parking lot from here over, from the building over. And, uh, you know, they're doing some renovations on this corner right now. And so at this, at this time, this place, which is still a parking garage downtown, it had a cafe on the corner, the lunch spot. It actually had its own gas pumps, which you can see the top of right here. So someone could, you know, get refueled downtown, one of the few gas stations. I mean, not at that time, but uh, if there was one now. Uh, but a barber shop that's still in operation in there uh, today. And this is right near the Union bus station. So this parking lot that you see on the far right is actually, uh, or here's a wider image of the same building. So that last picture would have been taken right here in front of the building, same building. But this is the process on how I kind of go out there. I have the image loaded on my phone so that I can kind of see the uh, dimensions. And so if the building was still there, it'd be easy to match this one near this window, match the sign halfway with, you know, so you basically look at different parts of the image to make it kind of blend. And so after I look at this, take the image, depending on where kind of the sidewalks lined up with different parts of the buildings. And then eventually it comes to this part. And so this is, uh, I really like this one because of the sign and everything that was once there. But uh, we lost this one in urban renewal as well as the Akhtar Shrine. Uh, but this technique is kind of one that I picked up during kind of a real estate. It's a way of masking uh, images together. So it's uh, kind of melded from a few different techniques. But as the project evolved, like I said, it became a little more seamless. And so. Here's the old Gates hardware. Uh, this is in the Tulsa Arts District, the Brady right here. So Mexicali would be right here-ish. This was just a candid photo that some newspapermen took of them installing uh, an air conditioning across the street at the <laughs> Oklahoma Natural Gas Building. And then this is actually Bob Will's bus on the destroyed part of the warehouse market that's still there. So this is the dining area for Mazio's. So this part of the building's a parking lot right now. But uh, the image, the two images on the right are the ones upstairs, can be found upstairs. So we'll talk a little bit about resources where I get some of my images from. And I'd say some of the most powerful images and some of the kind of the more rare ones come from just talking to individuals and that's kind of how this project started originally and I've gotten into a lot of contact with people because of that as well. The Historical Society has over 20,000 photos online that are archived. The, historical, or the Tulsa University has plenty as well in their archive and uh, the library, this is uh, this is their whole online archive, so you can even look for yearbooks, uh, oil photography. So some of these, you know, go back pretty far up until the 1800s uh, or late 1800s. And then the library, of course, this is their online profile, but they have on the third floor, it's kind of a rare uh, combination of everything. So that's where I find some of the rarest images, including newspaper clippings, and stuff that I can digitize in order to use. Is that a downtown library? Downtown library, the central library on the third floor, they have uh, what they call the Oklahoma room. And there's uh, uh, numerous, numerous resources and plenty of people to help you up there too. But uh, the time machine, I guess you could call it, is the, my process on how the images kind of come to be. Um, I've done a lot of research in photography since I really got into it and knowing how these lenses change over the year versus the one that I use is there's a lot of, you can't just 
take an image from then and expect it to fit the same type of lens. So without getting too technical, knowing a little bit about the history of photography over the years. And then any editing system, I use Photoshop as well as some other editors, but uh, once you get your historic photograph, you can edit it with your current day photograph. And then finally, I add some of these photography filters, which kind of push the image that much further, gives a little more contrast, gives a little more kind of artistic value. So uh, this is a quick edit lapse, so about 45 minutes. And this is gonna be, I'll try to explain it as we go here. So here comes the original image and I'm starting to bend in order to make up for the lens distortions. Right now I'm doing a dodge and burn method which is familiar when you're working in the dark room in order to use contrast on specific parts of the image. So there's a lot of detailing. Right now I'm masking out what I don't want and then again realigning. And this one's good because you got a whole bunch of uh, really noticeable things, uh, contrasty things on the building. But again, masking everything out. And then kind of finishing up the image, the ed edges and everything. And then I kind of layer it in order to give a little atmospheric, uh, you know, hue around the sky and everything. And so this is uh, the Tulsa Arts District um, right there. Um, Valkyrie is what it is now. And this is an image that's featured. So at the time it was Bader Supply, a refrigeration supply company that was uh, located there. They actually had the building next door as well. And uh, they were operated there until about the 60s. And the railroad district in the area really went downhill. So I have a uh, a new piece on that one on my page which I'll get to here in a little bit. So this same location is Benny's Billiards which again I'll go back you see that Bader Supply, this B is the same B that they used for S.E. Hinton's novel Benny's Billiards. So this is a pretty familiar face, Nicolas Cage. His first movie was shot here in Tulsa. He was Nick, uh, Nicholas Coppola originally, so he was Coppola's nephew. And uh, this is them inside of Valkyrie, the same place uh, that Rumblefish was filmed. And this, this is a current day image that I was able to find. So they're basically sitting in that same, you can see this division in the wall that's still there. And so, uh, we talk about this, I do the Outsiders Tours, um, mainly because of the photography that I've gotten into, it led to this project, which is uh, images from the Outsiders. So this is when they get pulled over downtown, in the same district, of course. But this is, uh, uh -oh. the high quality again might mess with it, but uh, you can see the kind of disappear. But this was in 82 when they shot both Outsiders and Rumblefish. Then next up are these lenticulars. So it, me and a buddy kind of got together and we were like, how can we get these images? We can't have a screen for every single one. So if we're gonna display them, how can we display them so that they actually disappear but without you know, getting too much involved as far as pricing. And so here's some of the first uh, outsiders lenticulars that show the different shooting locations. And these are kind of like bookmarks, which are available. This is Crutchfield Park near the house. Rob Lowe there, Patrick Swayze. And then again, that same one. So, uh, try not to get too tech. <laughs> this took a really long time. So I started, I started this process last July and I probably didn't understand it until late last fall. And uh, it basically comes down to a lot of math, but what you're seeing here is the most basic example. I have two images, one being the past, one being the present, and you, you basically interlace this image and then you apply it to one of these lenses. 
And so once that lens is on there, if you're looking at it from right here, you're seeing the left side of that image underneath it. If you're over here, you're seeing the right side. So this lens splits the image in half, allowing you to see one side or the other. So that's the most basic representation. And so I was like, well, I'll just I'll print it out and see what happens, you know? And I, so I went to a local place and it didn't turn out the way that I expected. And I didn't know why. And they said, you know, you gotta do these pitch tests. So I had to figure out actually where the lens and my printer lie. So the one that disappears, 39.7, you're gonna use these different dimensions in order to find how your pixels are gonna separate. And so here's basically a shortened version of the process. So it prints out in an interlaced form. So once you get it out of the printer, you come and you can kind of see this translucent image. It doesn't move yet, but then when you apply this lens to it, that's where it starts to kind of disappear. And again, this doesn't work for every image. Some images work more, mainly due to contrast and other issues like that. So it's a lot of experimenting. And then here's another kind of look. This is a Greenwood and King kind of a project that I've been working on. Uh, urban renewal and Greenwood district. And so you can see this is one of the ones that's upstairs in fact. This is uh, Greenwood near Langston and you can see how uh, populated it really was, really densely populated and uh, now you know very far from it. And so this unreleased image here is right up the street from that last one. So the last one I took would have been at this intersection on King. I think Latimer's the next one up. And so this is outside of an old Sundry, Larry Sundry store. And uh, the Tulsa Historical Society has a lot of these photos which have, would have been, you know, police officers on scene of different accidents and even fatalities. Uh, but those are available online, so if you're looking for a specific intersection, most of the time I find stuff that's uh, yeah, I can't find anywhere else just because no one took a picture of it, but they took a picture of it because they had to. And so this is another image that's featured. This is Greenwood right behind Fat Guy's Burger Bar. So this would be the highway that cut across into here. The church is still standing, of course. And then you can see uh, the Sand Springs Railway. It's gonna be looping right around here. And the Sand Springs Railway went till 1955. So they were running passenger service up until 1955, which is pretty, pretty wild to think about since they started in uh, 1906. And then this is looking the exact opposite direction. So that's the baseball park when the rail used to go right through it. It wasn't the only rail. There's two that crisscrossed right there. And then this was the most recent one uh, in Tulsa People and uh, is featured upstairs. And just recently I was looking up some inner urban information and this, this was the waiting room. So I actually have a really cool photo of that a little bit further down, but this was train 72. And again, they ran this uh, up until 55 and the Tribune building would have still been uh, around at that point, but now apartments of course, or the Tribune would have been around. So, and so like I was talking, the future of this project uh, lots of urban renewal and focus specifically on the northern side of uh, Greenwood as well as uh, northern side of Canes and the whole north side really where the highway came through. So this was one of the other theaters in the Greenwood district that was destroyed by the making for the highway there. And again, all this, all this is gone, but they moved the May Maybell Little House down here now where the Greenwood Cultural Center is. Do you know what theater is? I want to say the Rex, but I'm not completely sure. I haven't, this is actually unreleased, so I haven't gotten to the deep research aspects of it yet. Um, but another thing that I actually started before a lot of these composites was this project called uh, um, 
20 for 21, basically 20 images from the race riot that are colorized and uh, gonna ho hopefully have an exhibit at some point with some of these images. This is uh, uh, B.C. Franklin, Burt Franklin's dad. He operated the uh, law office out of this tent um, d right after the riots and F.E. Thompson, his uh, secretary there. And um, man, I can't remember that guy's his assistant there. Uh, but like I was saying, uh, on your way out or whatever, the Tulsa People article is this month. So this is the one right, oops, the one right there is the same one right here. And so that just came out uh, today or yesterday. And uh, a lot of the times, this is actually about the fire department, the history of the fire department starting as early as when the half side of Main Street burnt down and they uh, basically had this ragtag effort. They would like shoot guns and stuff to realize that there was a fire going on to alarm people. And uh, this is uh, on North Main, or yeah, on North Main looking north. The Fox Hotel signage is still there today. Uh, this would be Prairie, which is still there. Keynes is down there. The Davenport Lofts are getting built. This building's still here as well. But a lot of this stuff is kind of sidecar with other things that I uh, make as well. So here's Fire Station 3, the oldest surviving fire station. And this is on 3rd Street, right down from uh, Hodges Bend in that area. Peoria would be the next street over. And uh, to kind of wrap up a little bit, the my pages and everything, I kind of have... Uh, the, originally, it started with the Tulsa Past Instagram page. Now I've recently added some Facebook stuff because I realize not everyone's on Instagram. Um, my website's there as well, and I have some pretty cool stuff on there as well as some prints. Um, the exhibit here at the Historical Society will be open till June, and so feel free to bring all your friends over the next uh, little bit. And uh, Buck Adams here, 1969 image of the old Pimco gas station. That's, uh, if you go there, there's some, I uh, have exclusive prints available to buy there as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I had this comment thing. But if you uh, talk to me or anything, we can figure something out. But again, uh, the exhibit that features a lot of these images is upstairs, kind of in the middle of the building. So whenever you guys get a chance, definitely jump up there and check it out. Uh, but other than that, that's uh, really just kind of an encapsulation of what uh, the Time Traveler's Guide to Tulsa is. So you could do this through yourself if you wanted to. You know, uh, it's been a pretty fun project myself. So uh, I'm going to keep going with it. But. Uh, <laughs>